السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين uh, Welcome to our next episode in uh, our series The Greatest Miracle After the Quran which is the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In our last episode we had discussed how the Quraysh were torturing the Muslims and uh, how they kept increasing uh, their level of persecution of Islam and Muslims until the Prophet Sallallahu uh, felt that there was too much pressure and there had to be some type of outlet. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi commanded or actually permitted the believers that they could go and uh, live in a land called Abyssinia who has a ruler named Najashi or actually Najashi was his title and he was a person of just uh, character and who did not oppress people. Uh, he was a just ruler. So the Prophet ﷺ told some, the Sahaba that uh, they could go to Abyssinia. Also, there's something that we see in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, that he always took precautionary measures. He always took precautionary measures to protect Islam from major harm, to protect Islam from major harm. So one of the things that he had in his mind was that in case the Quraysh succeeded in wiping out Islam and Muslims, then he wanted there to be like a second copy saved somewhere else, like another copy of Islam saved in an independent location like a backup, that in case this copy in Islam in Mecca was completely wiped out, you would have some people that were living in Abyssinia who could still pass on and continue the teachings of Islam and it would not be wiped out. So the Prophet Sallallahu sent the Sahaba to Abyssinia and in the first migration, there were 12 men and four women that went in this. And SubhanAllah, Uthman ibn Affan, the son-in-law of the Prophet and Ruqayya uh, were uh, in this part of this uh, group of people and Uthman ibn Affan was the leader of this first uh, group that went there. They slipped out at a late night and they made their way to a port near Jeddah and they caught a ship from there and they sailed to Abyssinia. The Quraysh, when they found out, they quickly sent some men to try to catch them and to bring them back, but they were too late by the time they reached the port. The Muslims had already left. Now, when they went to Abyssinia, uh, when they went to Abyssinia, uh, just a few weeks later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al-Najm. And when uh, Surah Al-Najm was revealed, the Prophet wasallam he went to uh, the Kaaba and he, the Quraysh were sitting there in their assembly, the leaders of Quraysh, and the Prophet wasallam basically started to recite to them Surah Al-Najm. He started to recite to them Surah Al-Najm. And if you know Surah Al-Najm, it is an amazing a very captivating surah and it is it rhymes in an amazing way and it is just it is kind of like you know you're shooting arrows on a person's heart arrows after arrows one after another it is unrelenting it is unrelenting so and, and of course in a positive manner so the Quraysh they could not talk when they started hearing, they were captivated and they could not answer back. And they kept listening as the Prophet ﷺ kept reciting until the Prophet reached the last ayah, which was Fasjudu lillahi wa abudu and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prostrate to him or prostrate to Allah and worship him. Umayyah, uh, Umayyah bin Khalf, the one who used to torture Bilal, even he said, this is enough for me. This is enough for me. Like, you know, I have no answer. I have nothing I can say to how powerful this is. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there uh, answers or addresses a number of issues. And among them is that these idols that you worship are nothing but your own creations. These are just names. You don't even really know real details. You and your forefathers have made this up. And also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he will judge people individually and no one, even angels who are close to him, do not have the authority to intercede in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, 
when this happened, when the Prophet Sallallahu said, Fasjudu lillahi wa abudu, the Prophet himself went in sujood. The Muslims that were there went in sujood. And the non-Muslims that were there, they also could not help, but they fell in sujood as well. They helped, they fell in sujood as well. Now this started a rumor that all of Quraysh have become Muslim and there's no more persecution of Islam in Muslims. And this reached all the way to Abyssinia and the Muslims who were so um, pained at having to leave Mecca, they themselves, when they heard this, they said, you know what, we don't need to be in Abyssinia anymore. Let's go back to our home. And they came back to Mecca. Just on the outskirts of Mecca, they, they figured out or they realized uh, or they were they found out that, that that rumor was actually not true. That rumor was actually not true. And some of them, they said, you know what, we don't have it in us to go back to Abyssinia. So some of them remained in Mecca and some of them went back to Abyssinia. Now, uh, the Quraysh actually, they felt so embarrassed at what happened at Surat al-Najm that they felt that they had to counter this weakness that they showed with more intensity in their persecution and thus the torture increased even more. Then the Prophet ﷺ again told and encouraged the believers to go to Abyssinia from Mecca. And this second migration to Abyssinia took place, which was 82 men and 18 women. 82 men and 18 women. And uh, this delegation or the second group was led by Ja'far bin Abi Talib, who actually then became the spokesperson of all the Muslims uh, in Abyssinia. So basically a hundred people uh, went to Abyssinia the second time. The Quraysh quickly sent Amr ibn al-As because they were so embarrassed that these people are leaving to another land and they're going to go and tell us what we did to them. So it's going to be embarrassing for us, so we have to try to stop them from doing so. So the Quraysh, they sent Amr ibn al-As, who was an expert politician, a dignitary, a diplomat, and he was a close friend of Najashi. So they sent him with lots of gifts uh, to go and tell Najashi, and he said to them that these are foolish men that invented a new religion, and their families have sent us to get them back. Now, uh, this scene, as you some of you know, is captured so well by the movie The Messenger. I'm sorry, The Message, uh, that uh, I don't want to describe what happened in Abyssinia, but rather what I'm doing is that I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video so that you can click on it and you can watch it in all its glory. It is actually, you know, I, I don't really like the message anymore. Uh, not because of, you know, the information that's there. It's very good. But because it's now such an old style of movie making that it's hard for this generation, our generation, to really connect with that very well. Uh, you know, now there, uh, I'm, I've heard that there is now remakes in the works, that they're going to basically make an updated version with better technology, better color, better phot photography, and all that type of stuff that they're, they're going to basically remake it. And I'm really looking forward to that because, of course, you know, even Hollywood, some of the best movies that they have from the past, from time to time, they basically remake them to update uh, the same information, but just done in a new style. So I think that it needs to be done with the message, but this particular scene, you know, it is, it is still so powerful as is that I'm going to just put a link and you can watch it, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.